Let's have a lesson and discussion on this work. Follow the lesson for free and just pick up all the tips from the video. But if you're interested, I do have a sheet music edition of all 25 etudes in Carcassi's Opus 60, and there's a link for that in the description. Etude number 17 is a significant, you know, raise in level from the previous etudes, I would say. Um, it's also a really great workout. Whether you're going at a slow tempo or a really fast tempo, there's just so much uh, great finger independence and shapes in the left hand to practice, as well as right hand accuracy as well. This etude really focuses on, on dyads, so two notes in intervals. So we have um, the octave shapes, and we have thirds and sixths and octaves and tenths. Um, so all these different interval shapes, which uh, gives us a nice clue as to how we might practice it. So let's first just talk about the left hand practice. I would practice it in two ways, and I would practice those things side by side, even at faster speeds as you get to know the piece. So you can practice the dyads, the two note intervals, in, uh, in block shape and broken shape. So when you play it on block, as block intervals, you can just put the two notes together. Practicing it in that way will teach your left hand the, sh the interval shapes and really lock down the muscle memory. So your left hand will just know the shapes in, of those two notes as it goes through. So practicing in that way is very secure and really great for the muscle memory. However, you, you have to practice it as written and in, in broken format so that when you pick up the speed it can be very legato. Because when you play it like this, you can, instead of getting both notes at the same time, you can actually get one note at a time. You can see, you can get the bass note, then the upper note. Which means that when you're going really fast, um, you can improve your legato that way because you just focus on getting that next note. It gives you that split second. But I think practicing it in the two ways, side by side, uh, is really, really important. Um, in terms of the right hand, I'm playing everything with P, I, P, I, P, M, P, I, P, M. You could play it with just P, I the whole time, or P, M the whole time. Um, I find it more comfortable to alternate the two top fingers, but, you know, on a basic level, you'd be alternating the thumb and the finger. So whatever fingering is comfortable, but I definitely uh, find that P, I, P, M, P, I, P, M just feels, makes it feel slower in the right hand to me. But the challenge in the right hand is that there's a lot of opportunity to play wrong strings. Um, sometimes later on, like here, we have the second string, then the fifth string, second string, fifth string, second string, fifth string. So lots of jumping of the thumb back and forth which uh, gives more opportunity uh, for inaccuracy and in hitting the wrong string, right? So really great study for the left hand, a really good workout because it's like so many shapes and so many notes and it's going all over the place. So really great workout in both hands. Lots to work on in terms of accuracy and lots of shifts in this piece to get, to get those shapes. So just a real workout, and I think when you're practicing it slowly, it gives you a good opportunity to work on accuracy and finger independence. And then as you pick up the, the speed, though, there's lots, of, um, there's lots of other things that you can work on. I find one of the trickiest things about this piece is playing that forte um, dynamic level and the extroverted nature of the, of the octaves and some of the other intervals, but adding a little bit of elegance to it as well. Um, it's really easy to kind of like, you know, just like get really blocky with it, but trying to group notes together and scoop through notes in terms of phrasing is, is a real challenge in this piece. And, like for me personally, 
Um, I would like to continue working on the etude and just add more elegance to it because I think I have the aggressive nature and the extroverted nature of the piece and I've got the shapes but the challenge of, of making it just a little bit more elegant in terms of like the classical or romantic era um, and, and getting more and more phrasing in there is, is a real challenge in this piece because it's because it's such like a technical workout. So make sure that as you get more comfortable with the shapes, you start you know, scooping through notes and adding that dynamic phrasing um, throughout the piece to make it not just a technique exercise, but to make it very musical which is an etude, right? Adding, combining technique and musicality together. So uh, a real challenge in this piece. Let's do a walkthrough though, and we can talk about um, a couple of little things. The fingering is on my score. Um, lots of options for fingering, but you can just follow it. There's nothing particularly awkward anywhere, uh, but it just, it happens all very fast, but we'll talk about a few things. <laughs> Most of the fingering is all about leaving an available finger to get the next note. So use your second finger at the first fret. That way that shape is easier to get. Same thing here, using three, two, so that way one is available. And be careful of that first finger. And I measure, end of measure seven there. One, that way two is available. I just took a highlighter and highlighted that C with the first finger to remember to do it. It's just, it's like, it's not as block shape oriented. Measure nine. I do a bar, reach those fingers out, and then place your thumb on the sixth string to mute that, that E that's still ringing out. Really great etude, so many things to work out, work on, and it's such a workout in terms of finger independence. And there's so many different ways you can practice it. Uh, and there's there's lots of opportunity for errors, so just take it slow. Uh, it's a really great, uh, really great technique etude at slow tempos or fast ones. So uh, I just would always be practicing it slowly, but then you can bump up the speed sometimes and and keep track of your metronome speeds or something like that, but always practicing it slowly to get those shapes nice and accurate and work on right hand accuracy as well. So really great etude, um, very challenging and, and certainly a, a small step up in terms of the level of the etudes so far. <laughs> 